I like to call the board, uh, the Berlin Select Board, uh, to order for the um, Monday, the April 16th meeting. Uh, to my uh, far left is um, Pete Kelly, Wayne Lamberton to my left, Jeremy Anson to my right, uh, Dana Hadley, our administrator, and Diane Isabel, our treasurer. Uh, let's see here. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I have none. Anyone else? Hearing none, public comment? No public comment. Treasurer's report, um, Diane. I have, I have provided the March delinquent tax report, the March budget status report, and trial balance to the select board. That's all I got. Okay, and um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Is that everybody seen them yet? No, I haven't seen them. Okay. Um, so we'll, while you're looking at those, we'll have Timothy Schwartz, Capital City Grange. Thank you. Yes. Well, thanks for having me at the meeting. I'm have a chair. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to the meeting. And uh, I, first, uh, I would like to say that we've all been very happy with the, the way things have been progressing, is, you know, and feeling like we have some partnership with the town and vice versa. Um, so we are uh, trying to keep on moving at the Grange. We have another project we would like to do. Uh, a few years ago, when we redid the bathrooms and the lower level of the, the Grange Hall, uh, the, uh, the town gave us a letter of support for the grant that we were seeking at that point. Uh, and we are applying for the same type of grant. It's from the Vermont Arts Council. It's a state legislature funded grant. And uh, so I would be very uh, pleased, we would be very pleased if you would consider writing a similar letter for this project. The project that we're doing is more improvements to that lower level. For those of you that have been there, the lower level just has a poured concrete foundation wall. Yeah. And that's A, kind of ugly, uh, but B, also very cold, especially in the wintertime. In the summertime, it can be kind of nice because it's cool, mm -hmm. but not so much when we've had winter days like, well, like <coughs> one now. But uh, it's like this spring day. Earlier, <laughs> right, right. Earlier this year, we had a lot of really cold ones. So we we have to do some waterproofing of the foundation, put some insulation on the foundation, uh, new wall surfaces on the inside. We're going to put a new. Uh, new flooring down that will provide a little bit of insulation. We can't really insulate the floor per se. We don't have enough headroom. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, generally make it a much more welcoming space, which we think will be much more comfortable. And we'll encourage people to use that space as well as the upstairs hall, which is you know much more attractive at this point. So. Uh, I sent a draft letter uh, to Dana, which uh, you said you looked at, and I, I did. I'd be happy if you would consider writing something similar to that. But and I gave the board a proposed letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which is quite similar, but a little different. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's, I find a starting point is helpful whenever I'm trying to uh, come up with some wording. Yeah. If you'd like to, I probably should have emailed it to you. But if you'd like to look at it, I would. Uh, this is addressed to the friends of the Capital City Grange Hall. That's the uh, 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 nonprofit uh, charity that we set up, which is 501c3, you know, tax deductible, able to get tax deductible contributions. So that's who it's addressed to. And isn't the Grange itself like a 501? C7? It's C7 or C8, I never remember. It's a fraternal organization, right. and we're not allowed to be a, a tax-exempt organization under that. So you're asking the board if they're willing to sign another letter? That's right. Yeah. Yes, this is yeah. not a, a, a request for financial support or anything like that. It's just a, something that will help uh, to show that the local community is supportive 
of uh, the work that we do at the Capital City Grange and the way we'd like to improve the facility. How long did we <coughs> have Dana? It it's actually has all of our signatures. Oh, yeah. I'll move that uh, that we approve the letter and the sign. Second. Second. All those in favor? I'm going to steal my second. I guess you'll have a chance to read it after. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I scanned it enough to know that I don't think I have to worry too much. <laughs> I do. Need a pen. Yeah. There you go. I'm just going to scan it for my files and I'll give it to you. Yes. Great. Well, uh, thank or you, you very much. Mail it. I Thank you. No, I'll just take it with me if that's. <laughs> Out of curiosity, yes. Uh, how much is the the town using the Grange? Yeah. Uh, we had, we did a uh, a check on that uh, before the town meeting this year, yeah. and uh, we found that we've had oh, it's just about two years since uh, it's the a tax exemption, before. and we have about uh, forty eight no events yeah. that have been on the calendar. A few of those are were beyond the time of when I. I checked yeah. our, our listings, but uh, most of about 44, I think, were, you know. No idea of the amount of attendance on each one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We don't That's track that. that. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we don't track anybody's uh, attendance, really, yeah. uh, because we let people... You know, it's very user friendly. Yeah, at the, nice the, a recent meeting that I held there, I think we had 15 or 20. Yeah. So it's getting used yeah. pretty well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, that includes uh, private events as well as the uh, ones that are sort of civic and, yeah. and town related. The planning so. board had a, um, an yes. informational meeting there as well, or gathering town yeah. residents for working on the yeah. town plan. Yeah, that was interesting. I got to go to that one. Well, thank you so much right. for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's all right. Keep uh, you posted. Yeah. Uh, approval licenses. You have the script. Yes, I do. No? You can do this time. I'll move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant 18G20 with checks 17996 to 18039. In the amount of seventeen thousand nine hundred six dollars and sixty cents, as well as payroll warrant eighteen twenty-one for April first, April fourteenth, in the amount of forty thousand seven hundred and twenty-three dollars and fifty-six cents, as well as the March two thousand eighteen journal entries and the reconciled March two thousand eighteen bank statements for the general fund sewer commission and water division. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, see your signatures for appointment of town representative of Central Vermont Internet. It's actually a signature. Um, if the board authorizes you as chairman to sign, you appointed Mr. Hansen, at, or Mr. Hansen was appointed at the last meeting. You weren't here, but. Um, as our representative for the Central Vermont Internet. Is it approved? I saw it. I think we did that the last meeting. <laughs> yeah, did you? Okay. okay. If you want, yes. Uh, and you can mail it right to the clerk if you'd like. Oh, okay. no, 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 I'm saying I'm just being sarcastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just hand me a copy, it's fine. He's like that. I just wanted yeah. something, one from my file. Yeah, no, it's all good. Okay, Green Lantern Group Proposal Solar. On that, Dana. Thank you. <laughs> I feel for you, Wayne. <laughs> I feel for you. Um, well, Green um, Lantern Group was in, um, Robert Lemmert was in the last meeting and talked to the board about this proposal that he has. It's a 20-year agreement. Um, there are some unknowns with it. Um, 
the first 10 is clear, the, the last 10 isn't as much. Years. The years, yeah. yeah. It's the 20 year agreement. Um, according to his calculations, it would save the town approximately $3,000 per year, of which 2,000 of that, more or less, is the sewer division for their pumps and so forth. Um, again, sewer division has some changes coming down the road that hopefully they'll be using less electricity. Um, so I guess it's, and I know that he met, either met with you or talked with you. Or, right. Yeah. Um, and the board at that time, last at the last meeting, wanted another to have it brought up in this meeting, whether it was something that you was he going to go be here? No. He is not going to be here. He's away. Um, okay. At the moment. Let's see. I think when you were more knowledgeable, maybe you'd become so. But it seemed like it wasn't too big a risk. Wasn't going to make that much difference. And the sort of the soft factor of going the town going green seemed beneficial to us as much as the two or three thousand dollars of savings in the, the unknown. The bigger the bigger deal is the second ten years. I mean, right. we're assuming, and this pro forma assumes that the power bills or power rate is going to go up to two to three percent a year for the next twenty years. We don't know that. I mean. It's not, it's not a terrible assumption. It's not a terrible assumption. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that the power purchase agreement with Remount Power is for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We don't know what is going to happen in 10 years as far as what they're going to do with power purchase agreement. Right now they're paying 19 cents a kilowatt. They're probably not going to pay 19 cents a kilowatt once they get enough solar built. That was an incentive to get people to build it. <coughs> so if they reduce the credit to 15 cents or 12 cents, then, then our savings isn't what we think it is. Right. Um, but I don't think we're going to lose money. Right. Right. So the, um, we talked at the last meeting about taking the Shaw's pump out of this equation. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know if this is an old one, but it looks like this still includes the Shaw's That's pump. That's what it appears to me. It does. Right. Because so. he, he took it out. He projected at the last meeting what it would be, but I don't think he had any... I guess my point my point would be that we're not ready to sign this. I, I, I think at, at a minimum he should come back without the Shaw's pump in the That's equation. my point. Yeah, sure. I, I, and my opinion is that I don't think the town's going to get hurt entering into this mm -hmm. agreement. I, I, I can't look at my crystal ball and tell you we're going to save that amount of money. I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to lose any money. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're going to use some green energy is not a bad thing. Right. Um, the fire department's also expressed interest in getting in on this as well. I mean, obviously, they're using a lot less energy, yeah. uh, elect electricity per year, but they're looking at saving, you know, uh, a fifth of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But we need to recalculate this contract with the Shaw's pumps. Why don't I have him do that and then maybe come to the next meeting? That's fine. With that. Motion to table. Mm -hmm. so Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. To move. Thank you. Local emergency operations plan update. Yeah, and that's where Mr. Richardson comes in. Uh, <laughs> come up here. Uh, hopefully, you've all seen the latest uh, update. It's just uh, standard review every year has to be redone around this time frame and it's due to the state by the beginning of May. Uh, we go through and make sure the phone numbers and names and so on are, are up to date. Uh, certain elements of it are uh, pending, but there are uh, parts that are in the appendices which are not required to be submitted to the state. Uh, they're optional, and so we can update them at our leisure. Uh, that f specifically I'm referring to the uh, tier two hazmat sites in the town. The um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is uh, working up an update to the Berlin sites, uh, but uh, the, the submissions were originally due at the beginning of March and they were, uh, the businesses that have to submit those reports were given an extension to the end of March. So. Things are running a little bit behind 
schedule, but they'll get uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission will get us the update as soon as they can. And then we can update our appendices so we have the most current list of uh, potential hazmat sites for emergency planning purposes. That's the main uh, thing, hopefully, before you for uh, approval. Um, the tour asked me to mention that next year's plan may be significantly different. The Vermont Emergency Management has put forward a proposed uh, new version of the emergency plan. There, I'm uh, calling it a, a LEMP, a lo Local Emergency Management Plan, instead of the LEOP. Uh, they had submitted a draft for comment to the emergency management community back in January. We're taking comments through February, and then they're going to come back with a final proposed plan uh, structure template uh, sometime in March, and uh, that's still pending as far as I've been able to find. So just a heads up that that may be different uh, next year around, and uh, we're already planning uh, ahead to have to look at that as we get the information on it and maybe it, it might take some additional work because it looks at additional things that are not currently in the LEOP. So uh, just a heads up on that. I wish I had something to show you about it, but I haven't seen it myself. Yeah. So um, Move to approve the local emergency operations plan for Berlin for 2018 as presented. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Bruce, is this something that the committee um, turns in, and where does it turn into the regional planning? The regional planning commission um, should get it, and then I think they collect them and send them to Merck. Is that something management. you'd like that I should do? I think I can I can double check on that for you. I, um, I don't know how Tour had handled it in the past. Normally, well, Tour did it. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, <laughs> so. Uh, and that was great. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I just want to make sure this year. Yeah. I mean, I can certainly do it. It's not an issue. But L let me get back to you. If you would I appreciate it. Thank you. So, and just to know, um, somebody with the ICS training has to be the approving person on that. Right. Oh. There's, there's a little fine print on there. With tour in the past, that was not a problem. But just somebody who's had ICS 402 or ICS 100, I believe. I've had it. Yeah, I have two. You know, okay, so yeah. that's great. Yeah. Just for keeping the state happy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, memo received from Vermont Appraisal Company on solar field assessments. During the um, the work that the assessors have been doing, um, they discovered a problem with the way that the solar plants had been taxed. Apparently, there is a state law that exempts solar insulation from paying the education tax. And we have been charging the education tax. Um, now, we have one, I think we have three, Diane, three that we've, that we've overcharged. Um, what you showed me. Right. These are the ones that they showed me. So I wanted you to be aware of it, and, um, and I wanted your advice of where you want us to go. Should I write letters to these owners, advising them to come to the Board of Abatement? Was it the Board of Abatement? Civil, a board civil, civil Authority. Civil Authority, but yeah. I'm not even sure if that's the way to go. What? What are we well, talking about here for money? Uh, about eleven thousand dollars total. Two thousand seventeen. Okay. And it's not appropriate for us to just say, "Oops," and I'm not sure. And that's what I'm asking. See. But in the yeah. letter, I don't that know if I can. What he said in the end, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be complicated with the state, with the education council. I'm sure it's going to be complicated for lack of a. Um, well. We are going to have, the town will have to pay the educational tax no matter what. So in other words, the town would right. be on the hook for that. But we, we would be anyways. Yeah, I mean, just instead of, we yeah. can't collect that part that of the, the tax. Right. right. It would have been spread out across more people with a slightly higher rate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, it, yeah, it's not like... But, uh, but the education tax is not going to be shortchanged. Mm -hmm. 
get these 113 pages. And and they advise us to uh, page 82 to go forward and send no more, I guess. But I and uh, and I don't know if we have the authority to just do it. This is all news to me. So. Why don't I talk to Rob Halbert? Yeah, um, that's the best bet. And see if it's something we can make easy. You remember I came in and talked to them about this? Yes, you and I sat down with them. They told me I was wrong. Okay. Well, you now should feel good because you've been vindicated. <laughs> well, as you all know, this is not the first mistake. We've had, um, I think with uh, Clarissa working here, she's quite thorough, and I see things. Was it? But this was a mistake that was done last previously. Year. Previously, okay. Yeah. So it's a part she of discovered that lar lar a larger package of mistakes from the work. Yeah. 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 And for two, there's the two. There's two of them that this was the first year they were being charged. Right. For the solar fields. Why are you bothering? Okay. You want to do some help? Yeah. Um, one is two years, and then there's mm -hmm. two that are one year. So. Yeah. so Clarissa is who's doing this for us right now. She's the uh, she's working in the assessor's office. She's the does the clerical work. Can we get a side a side by side of the property owners? I mean, I mean, this I think this is something that we've talked about. I see. I see you have asked for reports, and I thought it would be good to wait until they're done with their April first work, and that would probably be probably the beginning of June by the time they're done with that and then hopefully have them come in because in your policy you would ask for a little more mm -hmm. ability to have oversight. Yeah, just going from, I'm looking at this first bill here, going from $1,100 to 4450 it just doesn't quite line up. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. So we had a long discussion with the assessors about this. When when was that? A year ago? Yeah. Yeah, it was a year right around this time. Yeah. And it, it, this state law for tax and solar fields is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, my question was, so let's say I put a million and a half dollars in the solar field. I've got an assessment for $652,000. I said, do I need to pay a carbon tax on the panels and inverters? Because what are you taxing? Are you taxing the installed solar fill? Are you taxing the land and the power and the infrastructure and telling me that's equipment? Because if so, when you when you send me the form for the equipment tax, am I supposed to include the inverters and solar panels? So we read the law, and the law, the state law that's attached here is assessing the solar field by production. The amount of power it's producing is determining the value of mm. the solar field. So they came up with a special law to try to tax solar fields. So I'm assuming I don't pay equipment tax because I'm assuming I'm paying it in the, the property tax, but that's what we came to discuss. And I said, I want to be fair. I want to pay my share, but I don't understand. And uh, we had a long discussion and they said, this is the way it's done. And now if you've got to get back the education tax, it's crazy. Like this bill, our bill, uh, $11,000 for the solar bill, 8700 is education tax. But I think we, maybe, maybe we need to discuss how to <coughs> use that equipment tax. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Before we make a precedent, I think we should think this one through. Right. And maybe that would be a part of the, the question to Rob the like what's the what's the way forward. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Right. To make this so this makes sense given this alternative you know which doesn't make any assessment. sense to me at all. How do you assess the value of real estate based on its production? Right. Electrical production. Right, which is going to change. We had a rainy spring. I mean, is that going to be less? <laughs> no, is it capacity or is it what actually comes out? All right, it's a, it's capacity. Hmm. But I, I don't know. Don't know the answer. Hmm. I will um, talk with Rob and bring it back. Yep. It is a complicated. Hmm. 
subject. Okay, and a special event permit uh, for Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Vermont. Blue Cross and Blue Shield um, has a walk at lunchtime walk every year about this time. They're going to have it on the 25th. They've had this in the past. Um, their route is the same, um, going from their office down industrial to uh, Granger to Comstock and back. Um, they have the insurance in place. Um, they have asked that you waive the fee. This is a, uh, a non-profit walk. They're not raising any money for it. It's their employees, basically, that are going to be doing it. And they will have um, people that are helping with traffic. And we waived the fee in the past? We have. Not for non profits yeah. Move to approve the special event permit application for Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Vermont and to waive the application fee. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Right in the bottom, Brad, where my check is. This is super fast. Super. Thank you. Okay, uh, Vermont State Revolving Fund for the Wellhead Number Four. I had mentioned at a at an earlier meeting um, about the State Revolving Fund loan for Wellhead Number Four. Um, I've been working with Tom about it. He's been keeping the Public Works Board informed, and this loan is a $90,000 loan, which is to pay for the engineering, the preliminary work for well number four. Um, the state revolving fund, they've changed it a little bit. It goes to the bond bank now, but it is a loan that is, you can pay um, before its maturity. And usually what happens when you have your final financing at the end, like we did with the water system, it pays off that um, exploration loan. Um, the, it hasn't been quite decided if this loan is going to be used. Um, we are looking at a few other avenues that we uh, will be bringing to you. Um, but I, again, I wanted to keep the board up to date and at some point, the decision will be made, and would, this board would be the one having to sign for the, the loan. Just a uh, simplified version of the calculations that we went through to get there. We sold all of our allocation for the water system. Several people had purchased allocation that aren't using water. <clears throat> We're using a third of the water that's available. The system is built to a certain size and we're using a third of the water. We have four large customers coming on this spring that will use another third of the water. At that point, we're using two thirds of what we can produce, but we've sold more than we can produce. So that's why it was determined now is the time for the next wall. Yep. I had them, I had a lot of questions and Mark Anderson came back with those answers. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And he's he's on board with this, I take it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And am I reading this right? This is a zero interest rate loan. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how I read it. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll move to approve. Well, I get. I guess. I guess you could move to approve this loan. Um, however, you may not take it. Okay. So, um, so yeah. maybe you want to wait until yeah. another meeting yeah. until it's definite and how it's going to be financed. Okay. Tom and I are kind of working on a few, I don't know what's going to come to fruition, but mm -hmm. something else. And do we have a quote from, we have a quote from Mark about the cost of doing this, or are we putting this out to bid, I expect? Um, well, no, this is amazing because um, you have hired Mark Youngstrom to do that work. We already did that? We did that. Okay. Yeah, um, quite some time ago. Okay. And 
the cost to do it is coincidentally ninety thousand dollars. Of course. <laughs> Um, and again, this is the type of situation that we have to pay the bills, um, and we have some Mark Youngson bills that we haven't paid because we don't have the funds to pay them, which he is on board with. We have to pay the bills, then we have to submit the paid bills and request the funds to go to mm -hmm. Diane yeah. to come back. And then it takes, that turnaround time takes usually about a month, if not mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Okay. The good news is that we are still in water. We're going to start accumulating funds from the water. From the water. Mm -hmm. And I think the water division's done for a new um, for a new system has done quite well, um, keeping its cash flow where it has been. Um, we've been very fortunate that our customers pay the bills, and uh, we've been able to keep up with things. Mm -hmm. It's yes. going. It's going cash flow positive. So yes, you know the cash flow has gone. Very well. Um, when you add a third, yeah, and, a third. and certainly with additional customers, it will, at some point there'll be a surplus, which will be needed at some point. So why don't I bring this back next time? By that time, we should have definite answer. But okay, motion to table to then. Yeah. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion yeah. carries. Yeah. <clears throat> Town administrative report, David. Um, we have received the, Tom has put out the dates for the town plan approval. Um, the, they, um, the planning commission has finished its work and has the town plan ready to present to the public. Um, it is available online. It's it's a lengthy document, so I didn't make all copies for you. But if you'd like me to make a copy, I'd be glad to. Um, but I can also send to you the link. It is on our it is on our web page. So the the planning commission um, is having their first public hearing on this at the school on May twenty third. And again, I'll send you this schedule. At seven. Um, it will be at seven. Yeah. And the um, it suggested that the select board also needs to have public hearing. They need to have two, and so the suggestions are May 24th for the first and June 25th for the second. Um, after that, depending on what the input is from those meetings, then the town clerk would need to um, send the article language to printers and have it ready for the August vote. And I'll send you these dates. I we have submitted three applications to VTrans this year uh, for their annual grants. They have the the grants for Class Two roadways, and they also have structures grant. Uh, the Class Two roadway request is one that we have done. This is the third year that we've done Fisher Road, and we're going to try it again. Um, we band-aided Fisher Road last fall, which got us through the winter. Got some of the really bad ruts so that it, we could get through. But there's still quite a lot of work to do, and I'm hoping that we'll look, be looked at favorably. Um, we're thinking this is a, just under $250,000 to do that project. Does um, that include the signal? That does not include the signal, but that would be an ideal time to do it. We have budgeted separately twenty five thousand for the signal. I was um, just wondering if we could include the signal. Well, maybe, depending on the And I only say that because the, that is a safety concern. Sure. That's why I think it's a perfect time to might prioritize it. Yeah. To do that. And I have mentioned the signal in my application. <coughs> um, I'm hoping that that we looked in favorably and we haven't gotten a grant. I don't know, I, I'm taking it personally. We haven't gotten one since I've been here. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's three years anyway. Um, then we've also put in for two structures grant and you probably can guess what structures they are. They are the Mirror Lake Road um, culvert and the Richardson Road culvert. And the figures have come back from the engineer, our engineer is Grenier and Waterbury, 
And so we're asking for a $250,000 grant on the um, Richardson Road project. That's estimated to cost $242,000, and then we'll have incidental expenses that we're expecting. And the Mirror Lake Road is $208,000, so we've asked for $210,000. I would love to say and hope that we get that, but I, I shouldn't say it. Um, if we do not, obviously we may have to do something else. And, and, uh, are we, are we going to do the temporary steel plate solution to send one-way traffic through that? We have, we've talked about that a little bit, um, and as you know, it failed right. a, a, few, right. a few weeks ago. Tim thought he could shore it up by doing what he did. He did it on one side last fall, yeah. and he thought he could do the same thing on the other side so that traffic could pass through. Um, but he has done the pricing on the um, steel, what do you call that, plate, yeah. plate um, to put on it. We haven't gotten there, though. Yet. We haven't done okay. that. Is it? I haven't been down there. Is it passable by foot? Because there's that. Oh yes, the cars are still going through there. Yeah, I, I think yeah. he's. I went over this weekend to check it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's been going around the. Yeah, going around. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, should we get by foot? Let's go back to that question. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure because they have that the five mile race coming up. That sure. Yeah. That seems like yeah. And Tim will probably be down there very shortly to. If you can ever stop plowing or, <laughs> or salting or put some barricades up there. or something to to do his well, he has, what he thinks he, he can does. Do. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, do they wash away? No, but it's just moved. <laughs> oh. yeah. Lovely. It, it is amazing. It is. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, so that's all I have for a report. Okay, thank you, Dana. Uh, round table, Pete. Um, I'm all set. Thanks. Point. Jeremy? Um, the Berlin Elementary School Board is looking for a member. Carl Parton resigned, and uh, they're looking for somebody to fill his shoes, at least until the next town meeting. So that's all I got. Okay. And motion to convene the Liquor Board. Move to recess the Select Board and convene the Liquor Control Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 What have we got, I have two renewals. Um, liquor license. One is a first class restaurant liquor license, and that is for Leo Foy, who runs the new um, Dog River Brewery, which is down on 302 um, in the uh, Big lots, I guess, is in that plaza, Vermont Plaza, is what I'm trying to think of. So I have that application, and we have no reason to know that it shouldn't be. And the other is for the steakhouse, which is also on Route 302. Move to approve the licenses for Dr. Brewery and the steakhouse. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, motion carries. We move to adjourn the control board and reconvene the select board. Second. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any executive session tonight? Not anyone? tonight. Move to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. So, any 